Hello and welcome to The Wolf's Den. I'm Dave here with Mary Ellen, and today we are going to be talking about where we think Danny's plot is moving in the future. But before we get started, we wanted to first point out a couple of things that we noticed that we never managed to get into any of our Danny videos. So the first thing was that old ladies are Danny's weakness slash blind spot. Totally true. <laughs> it's completely true. And what we mean by that is, first, she made some pretty bad decisions um, after falling for Miri Mazdor and her BS. Indeed. And then, and we can elaborate on that in a second. But and then the second woman who kind of dupes Danny into thinking that she genuinely has her interest, her best interests at heart, is the Green Grace. So yeah, Danny just seems to have like this soft spot almost where she inherently trusts old ladies that have given her no reason to trust them. Yes. Like the she doesn't make old ladies for some reason are the only people that she doesn't make earn her trust. She just gives it to them right off the bat for some reason. It is, like you said, it's a blind spot. Even though both of those women are women she should be wary of because they actually have obvious and clear motivations to not want to uh, her to succeed. Miri Mazdur didn't have any positive feelings or thoughts towards anybody associated with the Dothraki. So she's somebody that you would think that you might want to be wary of. Exactly. The Green Grace is another person who would have actual motivation to not want Danny to succeed as well. Yet in spite of that being almost obvious, Danny For some trusts reason, them doesn't get it. right away, implicitly. And both of them were just conquered by her. They're an old lady. Like she is with Miriam Asdor, she's the call's queen. She's his wife. She's the Khaleesi of the Kalasar that just slaughtered all of her family and village and took her as a slave but Danny saved her so at least that gave her some reason to think that she might have some sort of loyalty towards the girl that yeah. saved her and she says that yes but then there's the green grace who was literally just conquered by Danny directly not even Danny's husband right it's not even Danny being indirectly involved in it. This is Danny's overt. She came up with a plan. Her army stormed the thing. She now rules this city because she took it by force. Yet she keeps trusting these old ladies, and I don't understand why. In the situation with the Green Grace, it's a little bit more prolonged. She has more interaction with her over a longer period of time. And when you read it, maybe not the first time, but the second time, it, it's abundantly clear that this lady... Is it's not fond of Danny. Yeah, she's not fond of Danny. She's not fond of the dragons. She does not support this dragon queen's rule, and is kind of being underhanded towards her in any way, in every way that she can. And there's so, a couple of scenes where it's like overt, where Danny's like, "Talk to me like that again, bitch, and I'll freaking feed you to my dragons." Yes, they get into a few spats, but even still, Danny has this blind spot when it comes to them. So that's something to see as she transforms back into, as we're going to talk about in a few minutes, the dragon. Is that something that's going to continue to plague her throughout the series? Will we see a third old lady? That Everything does... with Danny comes in threes, yeah, so it's so... entirely plausible. In fact, maybe all three of them, maybe all three of the betrayals will actually be women. I actually was just about to say that. Cause Miri... And I just had that revelation as we were doing this, because we've got to. Yeah, as soon as you said it, I was like, the Green Grace is betraying her. That's a huge betrayal that Miri is happening. Miriam Mazdor betrayed her. Yes. There's two. She's waiting for a third. She's looking at all the guys, but exactly. pretty much all the guys worship her. So it seems less likely, actually, that one of the guys will end up doing it. And she, like you said, she also makes a lot of them prove themselves. Yes. The guys she is inherently distrustful of. She seems to trust women. And psychologically, I guess that makes sense. They appear weak to her. She's they never have, known a strong woman. 
Well, or not a strong she doesn't one. Mary... view them as a threat to her. Right. Because A, she's the most beautiful woman alive, so she's not worried that any of them are going to, you know, take her man or blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it's short-sighted like that. She doesn't have any reason to be jealous of any other woman on Earth. That's what she's, she's thinking. She's the most powerful woman on the planet. She has dragons, and she's the most beautiful girl on the planet. She has no reason to view women as a threat. And that's a that's a pretty big blind spot for her because women are just as loyal and steadfast in their devotion to their cultures as men. Yeah, and I've seen mean girls. I mean, girls, <laughs> girls, girls are no nicer than guys are. Um, that's for sure. But, I had sisters growing up too. I, I've seen it. First yeah, well, like, uh, I've dealt with it. But yes, so Danny, that's something that we'll, we want to wanted to make note of and keep an eye on moving forward. The second interesting thing that just really didn't make it into the videos and actually came up more so in our in our observations when we did the Drogo video. Yes, was that both of the men she married in Essos were visionaries who seemed to view Danny as a means to achieve their ends. Drogo did end up falling in love with her, but his initial motivation in wanting Danny, it seems clear, had nothing to do with hoping he was going to fall in love with her. No. I think he wanted dragons. Exactly. And then with his dar, he looks at Danny and sees a new way for his people. Well, and her, she has the strength. I think that's he saw necessary. her as being someone who has the army and dragons and things that could force the Maronese, to modernize. Yes. Because they were still living like it was 5,000 years ago. They haven't moved forward at all, and they're just their cities are decaying. Like, it's sort of the Giscari. same thing with the Dothraki. Yeah, they, they created a way of life and never... And never progressed at all. Both of those cultures were stagnated. Correct. They were making no forward strides at all. And Khal Drogo was a different kind of call, and his dar seemed... He's a different Giscari guy. He's a guy. different kind of Giscari guy. He he thinks that their old ways are tired and boring and he doesn't care about it at all. He is a man of the world, kind of, in a similar way that Drogo was, how he had friends from all over the world. Yeah. They mentioned, just like in what, one random sentence early on, yeah. that his dar has friends all over the world because he does worldwide business. Yes. And through this worldwide business, he had developed relationships all over the world. And he had seen how the rest of the world is moving forward. And then he comes back to Slaver's Bay and he sees their cities and their walls crumbling and everything's falling apart. And he doesn't understand why he's the only one that seems to notice. Like yes. Everyone else seems to be super pr so proud of what they accomplished 5,000 years ago that they don't care that they've made no progress since. Exactly. And neither one of them, it doesn't seem to be okay with either of them. And revolutionizing Essos and whatnot will be something that we talk about in the prediction. But one last thing I wanted to mention before we got into the prediction part was um, a few, actually, no, it wasn't a few years ago. It was, it was back when George still frequently visited forums. This was even in like the pre-Wiki of Westeros forum age. This is like one of the first forums that ever existed. So this is back like in late 90s, early 2000s. Yeah, and he was interacting with the people, not like in a so spake Martin where you send him an email and you get one response back or like what I did with him on this, on his blog. This was a more interactive, like he was participating in a, in a in chat. In a fandom chat. Yep. He, the, one of the the participants said, well, it's clear that Danny's destiny is to rule Westeros. And George replied, is she, meaning like, is she destined to rule Westeros? Kind of questioning that that statement that was made by one of the participants. So in other words, he questioned whether that was truly your destiny. And by the time we finish this podcast, you'll kind of know what we think the answer to that question is and where we think that Danny is, is going to go. And, cool. and that led me to, to wonder, um, does she even want that? All right, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. All right, let's circle right back since we're going to try to track Danny moving forward. Yeah, so... And we're going to try to figure out where her plot is going. Let's go right back to the last place that we ever saw her. Uh, the last time that she was live on camera, if you will, she had just completed her transformation back into the character that she was prior to the Marinese plot. And she's standing next to Drogon in the middle of the Dothraki Sea, 
mere moments away from teaching Jocko and Mago the meaning of the dragon's wrath. But where is it going to go? Where, where does she go from here? So let's start off with the immediate. The first thing that's going to happen is she's going to roast those fools. Absolutely. Uh, those guys are Drogon's dinner. Uh, yes. Those guys are going to live for a, about two more seconds. Logistics question. Sure. Could Drogon kill that that Dothraki Kalazar? Does he possess enough fire? I don't know how many people are there. Okay. Me either. It's not clear. It, it's not clear how many of them are there. I think it's a hunting party, which is probably like ten guys maybe. Yes, the answer would be yes. He could okay. kill all of them. Yeah. It, all he's got to do is go, and basically bathe a 30 degree wide yeah. area in flame and all of those guys are on fire. Okay. And, uh, I don't think there's any, uh, you know, burn units anywhere close. Those guys are dead. No, they're dead. So she's gonna kill, She's those men are gonna die screaming, just as she said. Yes. As she promised at the end of A Game of Thrones. She said, or she vowed that those guys will die screaming. Those guys are about to die screaming. And uh, right before she mounts Drogon and decides I'm going to be a dragon and all of that. She says, in order to go forwards, I must go back. So that's going back to face Dothrak. Exactly. So we think that, like, in, okay, we're not going to talk about the show too much, but in the show... She goes back... To face Dothrak. Yes. And I think where we're going to see Danny kind of assume the mantle... Of the stallion that mounts the world, and he's going to unite all, and she is going to unite all the Kalasars. Okay. Whether or not, I don't think there's going to be a stupid scene where she knocks a bunch of stuff over and doesn't burn. I think that when these Dothraki see what she can do with a dragon, I think they're going to follow her. And that's why we thought Drogon was so, or Drogo was so adamant about getting a dragon, because they follow strength. It's like a Viking culture. Yeah, or it's like, almost like the wildlings follow strength. Yeah. They are, uh, Whoever is the strongest is our leader. And the dragon the person cowed with the, the, the Dothraki before. And it's going to cow the Dothraki again. So we're in agreement there. So she's going to go back to base Dothraki and unite the Dothraki. Yeah, however From, that takes place, I don't really know. Yeah, George is going to do it in some... It's going to be a lot cooler than that scene that takes place. But it, it's going to but be... But that plot point is going to be... She's going place. to... It, it's going to be similar in that what she is capable of is going to m- place her in such like a place the, all the Dothraki in such awe of her that they are going to basically bow down and say, we will follow you any place. Yeah. All right, from there, she really has no choice. Once she accomplishes it, however it is that yeah. she accomplishes it, she's taking them back to Slaver's Bay. Agreed. And to Marine. Agreed. From there, I gotta say that... The slavers are in big trouble when she gets back. Now, the peace a, is broken. She's at the head of a Dothraki horde that is probably hundreds of thousands of, of riders. We're talking like 150,000 riders. Her Kalasar is two, three times the size of Khal Drogo's. And she's leading this to, to Slaver's Bay. The slavers are in big trouble, and the Volantines who haven't arrived yet, but they're coming with their huge fleet, I would imagine they're going to get slaughtered. And Danny is no longer going to be concerned about every tiny little casualty. No, and she can't the gloves be are going to come off. Because her obsession about preserving this memory and this and re- overreacting to the situation with Hazea, that's over. She couldn't even remember the girl's name. She's like, I did all this and almost died. For a child, I can't even remember. I can't even remember what the girl's name was. So yes, so she's going to join her voice. And that is not saying that Danny is going to become some bloodthirsty, insane person. No, but she's not going to be concerned with every drop of blood of an innocent. No, because you you can't. can't You can't be. That would be like Dwight D. Eisenhower commiserating over every single drop of blood when we stormed the beaches at Normandy. I mean, like, I don't even know how many people died that day. I would have to look it up. But it's in the tens and tens of thousands of guys died so we could get a foothold on that beach. Yes, but they definitely, again, the Miranese used her concern with human life and her, that human side to Danny against her. Yes. But that's, she's got, she got rid of that weakness to her. Like, I'm, I'm not going to say gonna, it's going to be totally gonna do it. gone. No. But, 
she if wouldn't she needs do it to break a few eggs. She's going to break the eggs. Exactly. So she's going to go back to Slaver's Bay and deal with what's happening there. Um, she's going to massacre the forces that are against her, in all likelihood. Now, in the show, she installs. And this is a joke, Dario. That's definitely not happening. That we, is we, not happening. We know that's not happening. Do you in think? The books, let me ask you this: Do you think Dario will survive the battles that's happening at Slaver's Bay prior to Danny's arrival? Probably. I'll tell you one thing. If he is dead when she gets back, the level of brutality that she will exhibit towards the slavers will be written about in the history books <laughs> and talked about for thousands of years. I agree with you. It, it will be like scorched earth. Slavers Bay will no longer exist. Mm -hmm. Like it'll be a pile of rubble. That is just on fire. I almost wish, since the show wanted to go Mad Danny route, they had Dario die so she could start to, you know, kind of hint walk on that dark side in reaction to that death. Because even in the show, what did she do to the slavers? When she got back to Marine, she killed every single one of them. Mm -hmm. There was a fleet outside. She killed everyone. Mm-hmm. There was no mercy whatsoever. She killed all of them. And if Dario's dead, that's what I think is going to happen. Except it's going to happen... Basically, she's going to kill everyone in Marine. That is not a free person, basically. If you are wearing a togar, you're dead. Mm -hmm. And then she's going to go to Yunkai and probably just burn the freaking place to the ground. Because all their slaves are already escaped. Yeah. Like, their slaves, they might have gotten some new ones or whatever since then. But hundreds of thousands of, of their slaves, like a hundred thousand of their slaves were freed by her. She's going to go there and just lay waste to it if they killed Dario. Yeah, I agree. If they didn't kill Dario, she's just going to defeat their armies in a manner that they are broken and they cannot rise back up. Yeah. And then she's going to install, install Hisdar as the ruler of Slaver's Bay as a whole. Which will make sense because he's also a descendant of an ancient king that ruled Slaver's Bay. And he's okay with some of her, with some of the things that she wants done there. I think he wants quite a few of the things. The only thing that he seemed to disagree with was the fighting pits. Yes. Largely because he had just very shrewdly bought all of them. <clears throat> yeah, he had a vested interest mo monetarily. <clears throat> but one of the things that the Green Grace says, which I actually think is true... Slaving, they're dealing in human. Um, dealing in human flesh. We'll yes, say. yes. Became the predominant thing that happened in Slaver's Bay because they really had nothing to trade. In uh, terms they of... They have like olives. Exactly. And that can't really sustain the civilizations there. No, these are big cities. You need mm -hmm. to have more than one industry. Right. So that leads us to our next point which is about what's going to happen in Essos. Essos is a vast land with a lot of things that are just re natural resources that are not being tapped into at all. Okay. Now this was, I think this was my no notion. Was this my notion? This happened so long ago that I it can't It doesn't remember. matter. This happened, this revelation really came about. From a discussion. Yeah. Okay. When Danny brings the Dothraki out of the Dothraki Sea, what she has done in essence, in essence, is open up a landmass the size of Eurasia for resettlement. Because they literally only, there are only settlements on the coasts, and that is it. It is an entire huge fertile continent that produces nothing of value. They have ports, and they trade with one another, but that is it. Kohor, because they have Unsullied and Dothraki know the story of the 3,000 of Kohor. Mm -hmm. They are the only real inland city. Norvos, to a certain extent, as well, but they're like up in the mountains, and I doubt that the Dothraki could ride their horses there in, in force. Trying to ride speed horses and attack with speed in rocky terrain, they wouldn't be able to do it. So but Essos was once a land of that was riddled with towns and cities. Oh, yeah. The Sarnor peoples, all those things disappeared 
after the Doom of Valyria and when the Dothraki ruined it all. Mm-hmm. But with, by getting the Dothraki out of there, all of that rich farmland to their north of Marine, those rivers, all that stuff is going to turn into bustling trade, which will eliminate the need for buying and selling people being a huge business in Essos for people to make money. Yes. There's going to be so many other goods available for sale. Yes. That melons and God knows what else, sheep and this and that, like everything will be for sale. Who knows? And all of that land will be being made use of. There could be mining. There could be all kinds. Who knows? God God knows what's there. There is an incredible amount of stuff that will move Essos' economy forward. And, they and from being solely reliant on the flesh trade into... If you, yeah, if you look at most of those cities, they're all very dependent on the slave trade for making money. Yeah, because it's the only thing that's being... Because you can't, it's the only thing you, you can't, you can't do. use the land. The Dothraki go fight people and then they bring slaves. It's so dangerous in the Dothraki Sea. If your husband dies, you have to go to this mountain and stay there. Forever. Because it is not safe. No, you can't go. There, there's nowhere safe to be. The only These thing, towns are completely deserted. Yeah, the only thing, a trade caravan, trade caravans from the free cities are, we'll allowed, to, are allowed to pass through there to get to base off off rack. Rack. That's it. But because there's like some sort of gentleman's agreement that the Kalsars, since you're on your way to base... Dothrak, we're not going to bother you. But there's, that's one little spot. But that's it. There, But there's this whole other huge landmass not being utilized. Yeah, it seems to me, just based on calculating it, that it's larger than Eurasia. So all of Europe and all of Asia is unavailable for development. Yes. All of that is going to be on the market now. Which makes what Hisdar is trying to do. Possible, because then you find follow the Selhoris River north, which co- comes right into Slaver's Bay, right at Marine. If you follow that river north, it goes right up into the Dothraki Sea. That is a perfect trade port for goods produced in the heartland of Essos. They are going to become the chief port for the, that entire section of goods coming down to port. They're not going to take it up north. Maybe some of it will go up north and the Ibanese will help transport it. But the entire southern half of it, and it's unlikely that without the river, I mean, they're going to use that river to transport goods. They're going to make barges and sail them down Absolutely. the river to transport goods. Like that, That is going to become a city of the likes that Hisdar wants it to be. If you could get the freaking Dothraki out of the way. And Danny is getting the Dothraki out of the way. So by getting the Dothraki out of the way and then creating a new infrastructure in Slaver's Bay and creating the opportunities now for land to be settled, places for the slaves that were once slaves to go, you can go become yeah, a farmer. Go, yeah, it's like the Oklahoma the every, land rush. Yeah, this go is up all, there and claim your your spot, farm it, do whatever you want to do with it. We'll buy your goods. So in a way, Danny's going to kind of merge the and realize the dreams of the two men whom she married in Essos that had these revolutionary dreams together their dreams could would come true through Danny which is ex- un- which is like what both of them foresaw and with the two of those dreams together Essos can become a totally different place yeah it could revolutionize the way Essos making is making it so Danny leaves and will it be perfect no but no. it will be better yes infinitely infinitely better so then from so from there though she's going to at some point I would assume because she will be at a port city mm-hmm. word of Aegon landing in Westeros is going to reach her ears you think while she's in in Slaver's Bay getting yes every, she getting, will hear about it okay because it'll only take like a month he's already been there for a while and yeah at some point relatively soon a ship is going to make port in Slaver's Bay that has heard that about a dragon prince landing in landing in Westeros. In Westeros. It's going that story is going to get to Danny's ears. At which point she will have felt like she's done what she had to do. Here. And what she could. 
and and she is going to be like, Hisdar, we're not really married. Peace out. But you're in charge of Slaver's Bay. And if anyone has a problem with that, I'm leaving you. 500 Unsullied as your personal guards at this Great Pyramid. Mm-hmm. Uh, thou- it, thousands of people could try to storm that Great Pyramid. Those 500 Unsullied will hold the thing. Mm-hmm. We have no children. It's fine. We're we just, have no children. We're going to separate. I'm going to leave you with enough... And then we'll have, like, Resnack, Mo Resnack, and his guys. Mm-hmm. Like, all opposition has essentially been crushed. You had a dream. Turn it into a reality. I gotta go. Yeah. I did the heavy lifting. I did the heavy lifting. Keep it going. So Finish this for me. She's gonna leave. She's Then she's... So she's gonna hear about Aegon. And then she's going to take her truly massive army. Mm-hmm. And start moving west. Mm-hmm. I don't know if she's going to have enough ships to do all of it. They might have to take, and I've been wondering if we're going to get to see the Demon Road. Yes, I see. Yeah, that's cool. Because with, like, How- say, say she has 300,000 Dothraki with Okay. Her. You can't get 300,000 Dothraki onto ships. How many ships does that take? Yeah, because they're not ma- going without their horses. Not to horse. mention her unsullied. Yeah, and she's got to get all their horses. Yeah, the, uns- the Dothraki don't go anywhere without their horse. So. And you want them on horseback. Yeah, they're that, no use that- to her unless they have their horses. Yeah. So. <sighs> Do you think some Dothraki would want to stay behind and adopt the new way? Or will they all just have to leave? I think the vast majority of them are going to... I just said going to say, just like it happened in the show, they are going to be almost worshipping her like a goddess. And just following and her. And they will follow her wherever she goes. Okay. That's what I think. So how... Yeah, so, so maybe we will see the demon road. That would be interesting. So I'm thinking that the Dothraki might have to march their horses down the demon road. Under... Like Barristan or something? Under Barristan's command or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where she has placed him at the head of the at the head of the column. Maybe even like a Dario if he's still around. Maybe she flies her dragon and, above them. And she's flying around on her dragon while her ships, because she's going to have a huge fleet because we're going to have Victarion there too. I mean, we're going to have a real shit show going on here. I know, oh my and, God. Because Victarion's probably also going to meet the Volantine fleet. Like, it's going to get wild. Mm-hmm. Like, right away in the next book. It's going to be insanity. And... From there, her ships cannot. We, we, this has already been disclosed to us. You cannot go from Slaver's Bay to Westeros. There's only one way to go. You have to stop in Volantis. Mm-hmm. Okay. You cannot transport enough fresh water to go all the way to Westeros without stopping in Volantis first. This is where the whole thing really turns into a tinderbox. Danny and her huge army have to stop in Volantis. Mm-hmm. The slaves in Volantis have been, I mean, the red priests have been stirring this pot for the slave uprising. Yes. In Volantis. So when her dragon overhead and her huge fleet in the Dothraki horde and blah, blah, blah. Like, so you're land Volantis, and sea, they're coming. It, they're coming by land and sea in numbers. And, da- and above. It, 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 in numbers that break um, Garen the Great's record. Yeah, because Danny's. <laughs> yeah, she she's is, coming at you with hundreds of thousands of men and three dragons. Like she's on one, and there's three of them. Yes. Volantis is going to fall. Yeah, yeah. And fall fast, mm-hmm. especially since I think their huge fleet is going to be defeated. Some of their limp back to Volantis before she gets there. Mm-hmm. But they're going to lose half of. Their fleet and there'll still be those people inside the black walls. Yes, but that the nobles Vol- Volantis will. But you absolutely. know what? They are inside those black walls, outnumbered by slaves. Absolutely, they're completely outnumbered. Not to by mention slaves. the slaves that are there that outnumber them. Yeah, I mean, like inside those black walls, there are slaves that work there, and they outnumber the masters or whatever you want to call it by a considerable margin. Mm-hmm. So that is going to go poorly. Yes, Volantis is going to fall, and it's going to fall very ugly. And largely, without Danny having to do anything, I don't. I think it's going to be kind of like Marine, 
where she barely lifted a finger and the city fell. Yeah, I agree. History is going to repeat itself in Volantis, especially since the Red Priests there have been stirring this pot for, like, months and months and months, if not a year. All the slaves there worship the Red God, and the Red Priests are telling them, Danny is coming to free us all. Which brings us to the next point. The Lady on the Waterfront. The Lady of the Waterfront. Whom Tyrion and Jorah interact with. And she says, tell Danny we're waiting for her. Exactly. So what role do you think she'll play? I think she's going to be one of the people that sets the slave uprising into motion. Mm -hmm. That's, uh... Because she is a third older woman. And I, I saw a note that you had maybe third time's a charm. I don't think she'll. Be, I don't think she'll be the three strikes. She Danny's out. No, I. I, I think that this woman is, is literally waiting for Danny to start the slave uprising. Yeah. That ends Volantis as we know it. Yes, which would be great. And then here's more people. And then with Dothraki gone, all those old Rhoynish cities can be. Restored, right? Because everything is just empty. All of that and trade going up mm -hmm. and up and down the Rhoyne River yeah. will be restored. All of that farmland that Tyrion was looking at, wondering why there's nobody here. Mm -hmm. All of that will become like because Essos will Dothraki. become incredibly prosperous. Yes, there'll be no need for slaves at all because you'll actually need all the people to be free so they can go use exactly. the land. Exactly. It's almost like like uh, manifest destiny with the policies in the u.s where we were trying to settle the midwest to connect the east coast and west coast and we needed people to settle in between so we started whatever those 160 acre yeah. plots we just marked them off and go go take it whatever you want is it's your if you go there and and claim it it is yours start farming that because the current opportunities that exist in essos are the following you're either born wealthy and you're a merchant or a, a magister or something like that but for the regular folk, the options are be a slave, be a sellsword, or be a whore. Yeah, or, or you can okay. get into like some trades or something. that You can be like a blacksmith or something if you learn to trade. Yes, but there's not... There's not a very, there, there's very little opportunity in, in Essos. And opportunity will also make it unnecessary for everybody to just be a slave. Because they'll have other places to go and productive things to do. Okay. Now... When the slave uprising in Volantis happens, word is going to be traveling. First of all, word is already traveling that Essos slavery is falling in Essos. Lys, Tyrosh, Mir, and whatever the heck they call the sort of slavish people in Pentos uprising. Slavery is dying in Essos. Mm -hmm. it, it's ending here and now. And these are the people that are going to go settle all this land that's never been made use of. Mm-hmm. Okay. This was a question I had, too. What will what will Bravos's role be in this? Because they claim to be against slavery. But I find it very likely that they're <laughs> at the very least financing slaver, slaving operations. They're not participating so so directly, probably, but they are financing and profiting off of it almost surely. Absolutely. And especially, this will impact what's happening on the Rhoyne. And no, it would really depend, I think, on the type of person. We've never met the Sea Lord, and we don't exactly. I don't remember. Was a new Sea Lord named yet, or was one about to be named? I can't remember. But regardless, we don't know the guy. We would we would need to know if this is a big picture guy or a hyper focused guy. Mm -hmm. A big picture guy. We'll see this. What is Bravos in? Trade. Mm -hmm. Their ships are in every port all over the world moving goods. That is where the vast majority of their wealth comes from. And lending. Banking and trade. That's what they do. If the whole of Essos is opened up for producing more and more goods, Bravos is going to get richer. And really what you need is someone is whoever your envoy is that talks to the Bravosi, because at some point the Bravosi are going to approach. What you need to do is make it abundantly clear. You might hate Valyrians because we used to be slavers. We're not anymore. Now I'm the person ending it. And I'm going to make the whole world richer than it's ever been before. 
Mm-hmm. You guys, I will triple, quadruple. I might increase the amount of demand for your guys' trade ships by tenfold. Give me 15 years, and everybody is going to be rich. From the lowly people, now there's opportunity all over the place. Those people can go claim little farms. Produce more than enough for themselves. Sell the rest. That's how the world got on for thousands of years. It will be a level of prosperity that Aslos had never seen before. Okay, so then she's obviously going to depart Essos. Yes. And where do you think she'll land in Westeros? Dragonstone? Yes. With She's going to arrive with her massive but sort of ragtag army of foreigners, just like we saw on the show. And it isn't, and isn't as well received as she thought she might be. And I think that's true. I think that that will probably be true. Because she is going to land with Dothraki and Unsullied and... Yes. Just like madness. Ironborn, you know, who, you know, like not very God, popular. Yeah, and she, like Victarion's there. Like, yeah. Th- this is going to get wild. And, and it, he has Victarion, she's got Tyrion. Like, she's got a real ragtag group of people. And she'll probably get word pretty quickly about Aegon and what he's been up to. And we predict that he'll be pretty popular because every time we've seen him interact with anybody... He's very likable. He has natural leadership abilities. The kid was seems like he was born for this. So, and he was, and he's been, he has natural abilities and he's also been getting groomed for this moment. And really what it is, and this is one thing that I could see happening that happened in the show, except it's going to be with Aegon, mm-hmm. not yeah. John. Right. Is when she gets there and she's used to being loved. By, like, the small folk. They love her, in essence. Yeah. They borderline worship her. And when she gets to Westeros, the small folk are going to be talking about Aegon. Yes. Like they always talked about her in Essos. Like she's become accustomed to being treated in Essos by the small folk. Not to mention she has dragons, which is scary at first. Eventually, the people get used to it. Like, after a couple of generations, it was just normal in Westeros. All the dragons. But at first, the small folk were, you know, weird. rightfully a little nervous. Yeah, like, that's a creature, a magical, very huge, fire-breathing creature. Yeah, that, could, that would gladly eat me. And could kill all of us in a few minutes. Yes. So, there's that, too. That makes her a little intimidating. To And then... On top of that, she's the most beautiful creature anyone has ever seen. Right. Which might not intimidate girls. No, it does. It intimidates girls. But girls definitely... don't like her in the show. They actually did a pretty good job of having Sansa literally yeah. hate Danny for literally no reason. Because Except she... for when she finally says it at the end, why her? Jealousy. Yeah. It's not so much an intimidation why that her? girls because feel. She's, she's prettier than you, and you know it. And you know it. But when she says, why her, why couldn't that be me, is really what she was thinking. Um, So not so much intimidation from women, but jealousy. And jealousy breeds hatred and breeds wanting to take you down. Okay, now this is where it gets really interesting, though. Okay. Now Danny and Aegon are both in Westeros. Mm Mm-hmm. Aegon wants to marry Danny. Yeah, he's that's for sure. That is his plan, that is John Connington's plan, that has always been the plan. He has been thinking, I'm going to marry Danny. Since we've met him, his plan was to meet to marry Danny. Absolutely. Danny, early on in a dance with dragons, thinks mm-hmm. about how she would have probably preferred to have married young Aegon over Viserys because they're closer in age and blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. And Viserys always told her that they were going to marry each other, but she was thinking, it might have been better if I married Aegon. But now that Danny has kind of taken her own destiny into her own hands, will she be willing to marry now for a third time for the sake of politics? Especially because one of the things that 
is a big deal for her when she's making the decision between being what everyone else wants me to be, his Dar, and being what I want to be, Dario. Those are the, being who she wants to be is the girl that's with Dario. Being who everyone else wants her to be is the girl that does things like becomes his Dar's wife. Yes. Like so she, she's when in she's this a del- queen and she belongs to her people, she does. She marries. She does things like marrying his daughter because it's what her people need. Yes, and having these dragons, it's almost like the world has thrust this responsibility on her. However, does she have to take on that responsibility? Let's not get too far ahead. Okay. Because the way that. It seems likely to turn out so you can keep this uncertainty and mystery in the story is before any of it could get sorted out, like who's Danny going to marry, what's going to happen. Yes. Word from the north reaches the south. And that's what I was just going to say. She will take on the responsibility here. She has the dragons that can save the world. She's going to go fight. Exactly. So before who she marries and her big decision is made on what trajectory her life is going to be, she's going to end up turning north, I think. Along with Aegon and anybody who, who go north. is a decent person. Yes. Even those without uh, dragons are gonna who like, care about the world. Who care are, if we all die. Yeah. They're are, like, okay, we need to get our armies. And Danny's going to be one of those marching. people that cares about that. Now, what would be really cool, because by this point, in my mind, Tyrion's going to already have claimed Viserion. Oh, by this point. By okay, this so you point think that in Slaver's Bay. Okay, cool. By the time she gets to Westeros, Tyrion is going to be on Dragonback. Okay. I think. All right. That that sounds good. I, I hadn't thought about that, but that doesn't sound wrong to me. And I think by the time she turns to go north, she will have already met Aegon. And Aegon will have, in some way, shape, or form, proven himself to her by claiming Rha- Rhaegal as mm-hmm. his mount. Mm-hmm. Plus, he's sort of doing all of this to measure up to her. Yes. So he's not this... So he's not just a beggar. Like, yeah. Like uh, Tyrion said to him and like he said to John Connington. I'm not going to her as a beggar. No. I'm going to meet her as an equal, as someone who has already accomplished things. Exactly. So and not just has, been on this boat. Not just been hiding on the Roin for the last... Yeah. Ten years. That was actually good things. advice, even though Tyrion thinks it's not, but it yeah, was. W- regardless. So at this point, I think Danny. Potentially with Aegon and Tyrion, mm-hmm. fly ahead of her army to the north mm-hmm. to meet with John and likely Rickon and some northern lords. Because mm-hmm. Rickon will be back by this point. <laughs> yeah. And it depends Anyway, so on, she'll join the fight. She'll go up there to join the fight. Yeah, we don't have to predict, like, logistics. We know, I think, and you believe, Danny will fight in the battle for the dawn. Yes. Right. And we think Aegon will as well and Tyrion. And both of them will... At- at the very least, after meeting with John and the people up north, go back down south and be like, let's everybody, we are marching north. And then she so, orders her army north. Too. And then she'll order her army to the north. Aegon will order his army to the north. I would imagine that everyone but Duran is going to send <laughs> their armies to the north. Yeah. Everybody is going to head north because the world will end if we don't. So this is going to be the moment where Danny will have, in essence, done what George keep saying the world has to do. Mm -hmm. The whole world needs to join together to fight this threat. Yes. Danny will have accomplished 92% of it by herself. By getting the whole of Essos into one team to go deal with this. United in some way, shape, or form. Absolutely. Especially after the War of the Five Kings, they need these people. Yeah. You guys have you need little, the little finger and Durans of this Westerosi world have ravaged. Yeah, like Westeros. half of the fighting men are gone. Mm-hmm. So thank the heavens for Danny showing up with hundreds of thousands of warriors. Yes, not only the three dragons and three dragons, right? And hundreds of thousands of warriors. Yep, which you need because they've weakened your realm to an extent exponentially. Yeah, exactly. The fight, the infighting. In the mm-hmm. immediate, immediately preceding this happening is a problem. Right. Not to mention that there's food store food problems. Yeah. This could also be 
opening up trade and starting to farm all that Dothraki sea, this could be huge also because it's warmer there. They might still be able to produce food for a while going into winter. They might get a harvest or two in. To send something. And all this extra food. That's more food than Essos can use. They might start shipping the food across. Selling food from Essos. Yeah. yeah, In Westeros. Like this could be big time. Danny could be very instrumental. Instrumental in making this happen. And on more than one level of just being the mother of dragons. Yes. So. Okay. So then they're going to fight the others and blah, 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 blah. It's going to be. It's going to take a lot longer than what we're going to say right here. She's going to go up there. Oh, yeah. They're going to fight. They're going to win the new battle for the dawn. And I think during this period, she's going to gain a respect for Aegon. Yes. The jealousy, I hope, will, will have gone dissipate. away. After we just survived this, you're my only living kin. And now, can I say this? I don't think that she'll want to marry him. No, she's going to say no. I'm with you. Like, I love you as my family. Yes, and I But I don't want to be your wife. But I'm not going to marry you. Yes. At which point, she's going to marry Dario and fly back to Dragonstone, and they're going to live there. That would, that's Aegon my... is going to rule the realm. Yeah, because I don't think Danny. I don't. I, don't I think, think Danny. I think Danny will have at the end of all of that felt like she, I paid the. I I did. I fulfilled my responsibilities to the world. I I brought the dragons into the world and I used them to very good ends. Yep, I completely and now, changed Essos forever, and then and I saved the world. And I saved the world, but now I'm, I'm going to live for me. I'm going to go live my life. I'm not going to live the rest of my life for everyone else. I've already lived the last five years of my life. Or whatever it ends up being. Yeah, I had a hard first 13 years of my life. Running around. Yep. Never feeling safe. Then I took on all of the other, all of the world's problems, if you will. Helped fix those. Was instrumental in fixing those on many levels. And now it's my turn. George will either do something tragic with her, like she'll die. And having never lived for herself, which will be very sad. Or... She'll decide, she'll decline the marriage proposal. Say she supports him fully, though. Yes. You can have your dragon. I don't, this isn't you can, like... You, it's already his, she can't even take it Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to usurp you. Nope. I, I don't want to marry you, though. But I, I, I'm taking Dragonstone as my seat. Yeah, and I just want to live there. And, and I hope with Dario, yeah. And if Dario's still around, that's what she's going to do. That seems a little fairy tale for George because he likes to rip out your heart, stomp on it, and then. Well, there's going to be a lot of losses along the way. Yeah. Danny deciding that she is going to, after all of what she has gone through in these years of fighting wars literally all over the world. Yeah. She is going to take a step back. That doesn't mean that if there's an uprising or something in Aegon or one of his sons yeah. or something oh, of is in trouble. She will get on her dragon and she will ride to war. And like until he has a family and children, she won't be the heir. Yeah, she'll be his heir in case. Until. Yes, until. But Danny wants to be free more than anything else. Yeah. It, he From brings all it of that. Right away. The beginning of, what is it, A Storm of Swords. And she's on the ship. She's on Valerian. And she's never felt so free and so happy. Actually, it goes back farther than that. Because she, she felt first... that way when she was a little girl on a ship and Viserys smacked her because she's not a, Yeah, a no, but you first get that true insight into Danny, liking that feeling of being free is when she first gets on her silver. Yes. She felt exhilarated and at peace with herself just riding her horse with no thought in the world. She felt free in that moment, completely unchained. From her own life and demons and things like that. And then it, it gets reiterated over and over again. She loves the sea. She loved being at Dragonstone. As lonely as it was, she felt strangely at peace and free there too. She feels free and at peace when she's on Drogon's back. She doesn't want to sit there and hold court all day. Not every at day all. for the rest of her life. No, it's she not her temperament. Aegon has the right temperament. Yes, for he it. does. He is perfect temperament, in my opinion, for it. Especially for a kid his age. For a kid his age, he has patience that you wouldn't expect. Yeah, even though, he, yes, people love to cite the thing where he lost his temper with Tyrion and that. 
I mean, First of he's all, also a person, too. Yeah, he's not and, perfect. And Tyrion was goading him. Tyrion tricked him. And, okay, Tywin Lannister has is one of the characters with the most control over his emotions of any character we meet. Tyrion triggers him on a regular basis. Tyrion's a little shit. Tyrion has the ability, a unique ability to get under someone's skin. So let's not... And Tyrion was deliberately attempting to get yeah, under his so skin. Yeah, so if he can get under Tywin's skin over and over and over again, let's not hate on Aegon. And the... a- Aegon kind of viewed him as someone who he should listen to. Like, you're smart, you're very well educated and stuff like that. And Tyrion early on, like, advised him not to make a move on the board that he should have made. Yeah. He listened to Tyrion because he kind of looked up to Tyrion a little bit, even though Tyrion, even though he looked way down on him. But even though Tyrion ticked him off, he was still able to have the maturity to take some wisdom from the advice he gave him. I know some kids who, from working with kids, that if you had given them, if you had played a little trick on them, and then you gave them good advice, they're not mature enough to, like, separate the two. Yeah, they're still too pissed. Yeah. Aegon, Aegon has the temperament to do what Danny doesn't want to do. Yeah, and plus, he would have good people probably around him. Oh, yeah, he's going to. Whatever happens to John Connington is whatever. Aegon knows how to pick people out. That Tyrion would be a great guy to have around. Tyrion could hold court. He actually enjoyed it the time that he did it. So maybe Tyrion will end up being hand. That could happen. Following in his father's footsteps. Or, well, it's not really his father, but the guy that he kind of... Was almost re- sort of raised by. Yeah. <laughs> and almost admired in some ways, whether it's his dad or not. Well, you have to admire Tywin's accomplishments, whether you like him personally or not. Absolutely. That's what uh, a lot of people, when we made the Tywin series, lost that. Because they were so affected... By not liking him on a personal level. That like they he was a big want, meanie to Tyrion. But they didn't want to acknowledge how ruthlessly efficient and accomplished the man was. Yeah, which they're actually two separate things. They're two completely separate things. Liking someone on a personal level and admiring their ability to get things done are way too, two very different things. Absolutely. And in terms of being a ruler or something, like liking them personally really doesn't matter. No, it shouldn't. No. Whether it's a mo- modern president or a king from the past, liking the guy on a personal level doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. It's about whether or not the guy does a good job. Absolutely. Like, that's what it really, that's what actually matters. Is the person good at what they do? So, moral of the story, <laughs> we think Danny is going to be instrumental. She's going to fight like hell to win the battle for the dawn. Save the world, but she doesn't want to rule it. No. I think she's going to walk away. Willingly. Willingly walk away because she wants to live her life for herself and not spend her entire life in service to everyone else. I totally agree. She's already given so much. How could you really ask her to give more? Especially since Aegon wants it. And he is very well, quali- very highly qualified for the position. And after... It's not like she's just dumping the world in the hands of Euron and being like, no, peace, I'm out. right. No. Yeah. She's going to give, leave the world in capable hands and go and try to be happy. Yeah, I totally agree. That's what, that's what I think her arc is. Who knows? Like, her she wants to be able to, to away. like, live on Dragonstone and be like, you know, I wonder what Estelis is doing. And she can just, and just fly there and see what's going on. Not to be the ruler there. No. But She'll to just, just go visit and yes. go do things. And but fly around the world. Danny has go. an adventurous spirit. Very much so. Yes. And she loves the sea because she like that unknown horizon. Yes. She once she stopped being so sore from not being used to riding a horse and she had that first dragon dream on the Dothraki Sea or her second overall but first one on the Dothraki Sea. She started riding at the head of the column, anxious to explore, anxious to see the world. That, that, that's the kind of, like, girl she is naturally. That's the redundancy 
of sitting still and just listening to people's pro- problems all day, it's not her. I mean, it can make a normal... It can make someone who has the right temperament feel like, like Jesus, someone kill me. I would last about as long as Danny did. At the end of the day, she's, she's like, like, I don't even care. She's like sitting there like Indian she's style. She's like lounging on the thing. It's not her. That she's was like, it. I don't look very queenly right she now. She goes, I, 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 don't, I don't look very regal. That's what she thinks. She goes, but she was tired of looking regal. All right, all right, all right. Before we get too out of control, let's, uh, let's wrap this up because we've kind of moved past talking about what we were trying to talk about here. So the moral of the story is Danny is going to roast those idiots that she vowed would die screaming, go to Vase Dothrak, unite all the Dothraki, go to Slaver's Bay, annihilate the pieces of shit, leave Hisdar in control, change Essos' economy forever by removing the Dothraki, making it a prosperous place that does not need slavery to make the place function, turn her attention to the west, stop in Volantis, there's going to be a slave uprising there, they are going to join her, move on, all the other slave cities of Essos are going to have slave uprisings, these slaves are probably going to become her followers. By the time she gets to Westeros, she's going to have gazillions of people with her. <laughs> it's going to be out of control. Aegon's going to be more liked than her when she first arrives. It's initially going to make her jealous, but before any of their feelings or marriage or anything can come to a head, she's going to go north. They're going to fight. They're going to win the battle for the dawn. And then she's going to say, fuck it, I'm out. Leave the realm in Aegon's hands. And try to live the rest of her life for herself. Do you have anything you'd like to add to that? No, that's it. Amen. All right, that's going to be it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. This <laughs> is our prognosis for or prediction for <laughs> the direction that Danny's character is actually going to go in the books. You don't think she's going to go fucking crazy and kill a million <laughs> people for no reason. This is what we think is going to happen. Let us know what you guys think. Thank you so much for tuning in. And make sure you hit that like button, that subscribe button, that notification bell, and all that other good stuff. See you next time.